And we're going live, and we are live. Morning thoughts, morning thoughts, morning thoughts. Shout out to Roxy21 for being the first one in this morning. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up, shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers. Shout out to the Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery drivers, round town and long distance truck drivers. Shout out to the crossing guards. Shout out to the school teachers. Shout out to the students going out to school. Shout out to law enforcement personnel, medical field personnel, military personnel. Shout out to whatever your job description is. Shout out to you. Shout out to every single clean hearted. Good-hearted person who wants good for others. As much as you want good for yourself, you're a good person. Don't let that go over your head. Shout out to you. Here we are on April 2nd of 2024. Beautiful Tuesday morning with a lot to give thanks for. Even though I'm still coughing like crazy. But that too shall pass. All right. I'm a day with me. Tea. Eucalyptus and ginger tea in my cup this morning. And I'm feeling pretty good. So, lots of love for you all, says Freedom Earners TV. Freedom Earners TV, big up yourself. Banches, thank you for being here. Unstoppable Josh, Lisa Watkins, Wayne Nathan, thank you for being here. Senior Sexy is in the building with us. Say Ben TV is in the building with us this morning. Audrey Wright says hit the thumbs up button as you enter the live. Thank you, please, and thank you. BM is here. Thank you for being here. Marcia Walters, Dion Ricketts is with us this morning. Kaz Robinson is in the building this morning as well. Grace Tennant is also here with us. And Ferran says, up, up, up. All right, let's get the show cracking and on the road. This wasn't on my list to talk about this morning, but I just saw it again on my saved list. I have a saved list of things that we should discuss before the week is out. A lot of the times we don't get to the saved list because so much is happening. There's an initiative going on in Jamaica right now that I like very much. I don't care what political party is doing it. I don't care what political party started it. Uh, like I've said to you before, I'm not a JLP, PMP kind of person. I'm more of a Jamaican kind of person, right? Uh, so the initiative to do away with zinc fence communities I think that's a long overdue initiative. And you know, politics time again. So of course you see the Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Andrew Holness out there laying martyr, mixing martyr and fixing blocks and like him at the construction work, which we know he's not because that's not up his alley and he's not going to stand there long enough to even build a wall. But it's a good photo up and he is good at doing those. But neither here nor there. I think it's a great initiative, you know, to get rid of the zinc fence because zinc, the zinc fence, them look a kind of way to me. I don't know if, for, for those of you who've been to Jamaica recently, in recent times, I may not know the place too good, as in, I don't know the place too good, as in, I can't tell you the name of every street and crevice and corner, but I know the place as in seeing it visually. And I know where to turn when I need to turn there. So let me put it like this. When you leave Norman Manley International Airport and you start driving towards, say, Portmore, right? From Norman Manley International Airport, you're heading in Portmore direction. They're going to need somebody to guide me in. You know, when you pass the cement factory and go down and then you start go around and take your turns and, all right. All these zinc, there's a certain part there where. It just screams gunman community to me. I don't know. I don't. Uh, and, I, and 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 for me, as a Jamaican landing in Jamaica, I, I the first thing I think when I drop in at the place is this: Yo, this is our capital. You know, you you would think that the capital would be more like Montego Bay, because when you come out at Donald Sangsters, um, when you come out at Sangsters. You have like that view of the hill and then the road splits up and you have the big old Montego Bay sign and all these things. And it looks a bit more developed, a bit more first world kind of thing. But when you come out from Norman Manly at town, 
you know, start look like some zinc fence community not tool and it that that whole I'm like, yo, this look like gunman community to me. This don't look good. And then the road. The road have some big old pothole in the road and some it just it just screams help. It it just screams poverty. It it just screams we should be ashamed. So that's one of the places that I always thought that they need to start at. The whole Kingston, matter of fact, need to be revamped, period. Because it's the capital. And it should be actually a place. You know, if you're going to Jamaica, you should be like, anywhere I go in the world, I want to see the capital of wherever I am at. Right? So I'm thinking people want to come to Jamaica. They want to see the capital of Jamaica as well. So they want to land at Kingston and see what Kingston is about, right? Because a lot of artists sing about Kingston. Kingston is Jamaica's heartbeat business hub um, for business-wise things. So, and then you have the North Coast for tourism. So I don't think the tourists them only want to stay in the tourist area. I don't know. I'm just that's just me thinking out the box. But another thing I think when I think of the getting rid of the zinc fence them, I hope I'm not offending anybody who come from a zinc fence community. I may have some brethren and some friends and some family members even that dwell in these types of communities but uh, as a as a military man um thinking tactically all the time and thinking about the safety of whether it's law enforcement personnel or even civilians one thing always come to my mind is gunshot fly through zinc fence gunshot don't fly through wall Gunshot flies through zinc fence. Gunshot don't fly through wall. So, you know, I'm thinking of police going in these areas, having to be on call, having to secure these areas. And then the zinc fence, them look so tattered, like people just use them and make them own little lane. So you go in a one lane and then you have like a next lane turn off. That's all. Next lane turn off. That's all. Next lane turn off. That's all. It becomes like a maze. So, yeah, I would love to see them zinc fences out of there. And they build up actual walls, beautiful walls, um, so people can have their yard space. And the yard space is just like how me live here foreign. Me have my yard, my yard, well fence off, private fence, and these things. I would love to see that too, make people feel good about themselves, you know. You have a yard that your kids can play outside in the yard, secured, and these things. Them not playing in between some tall zinc and gunshot fly and nobody know where gunshot come from. And these kind of things. So yeah, that initiative, I don't know who started it, but a big up to that initiative there. Make your clutch your pearls. <laughs> Batches, make your clutch your pearls. Yeah, for sure. I don't wear no pearls, but may I clutch my pearls and may I drive through them here and there. I'm like, my God, this this looks this looks a bit tattered. It, it needs help. Said Ben TV says back in the day, we would walk from the top of the road to the bottom without touching the road. You walk through one zinc fence from one yard to the next until you reach. And it still happened. That's what me I thought about. You go in there and it's like a maze. And only who knows knows. Police running at them place, the police lost. They don't even know where to go. Gunman do them thing out a road or criminal do their thing out a road and them run in those areas. Police ain't finding them. They didn't know where they went. You just step in the middle of a maze. You know what I mean? So yeah, back to the... Fix up the place. I make the place look nice. I make people feel... You know what I always say to People feel how they live. Like how their environment is. Now, can't blame government for everything. The people have to start taking responsibility, you know, because there are countries in the world, again, that are way poorer than Jamaica. And when you go into their communities, like their neighborhoods, it's a concerted effort. The neighbors, the people, them get up. They don't even have real broom. They sweep with like them some fashion broom where they make. And them sweep up them place and it's dirt road and them place look clean and nice. Even though, you know, so I think we could do the same in Jamaica too. Jamaicans have a habit, especially in certain areas. If you eat a bun and cheese, you just throw the bag. If you eat a patty, you just throw the bag. That's all. If you want piss, you just turn around and piss right which part you stand up. So the place rank with piss and it have cigarette butt, um, 
bags from anything them eat chips bag patty bag this bag box food container styrofoam this that and the other everything just lit up the place we could do better too as a people now inside of these zinc fence places you have these kind of things i'm talking about as well right the place is littered and zinc and then not to mention the stray dog them and nobody ain't walking behind no stray dog and clean up no doodle so you have stray dog, you have dog doodle all over the place. You have flies, you have... The, oh, no, it's just... Uh, clean up the place, man. And we could do... You know, uh, I, I, I keep on stressing this too. Can't blame government all the time. We, have, we as a people have to take some responsibility. I was highly disappointed when I went to Jamaica and somebody said, Soflo, please talk about the beaches. I told you all this before, right? Please talk about the beaches. How come they're privatizing all the beaches and the citizens are not? Uh, some of these topics, we have to beat them to death and they have to be repeated because that's just how the narrative of the conversation goes. These aren't conversations you have one time and then, oh, we talk about that already. Leave it. Can't talk about it again because people will forget, right? Uh, I remember being pressed by members of this channel to... Talk about it. Talk about the beaches. Use your platform for something, man. So I went to Jamaica, and I made it a point to go to a couple of beaches. And I was highly disappointed. There's a video I have out there of the man riding down the beach on the horse. And the horse just doodling as the horse is riding. Now, me don't want to go at the beach because stepping a horse doodle. And nobody was cleaning it up. It was him riding a horse on the beach. He's not coming off the horse to clean up the doodle. The, the, the horse just a drop doodle, drop doodle as it's walking down the beach. Then the man, lo and behold, gets off as if it couldn't get any worse. Gets off the horse, pull out him hood and piss right there, so, right in front of everybody. He wasn't shy. He wasn't shy. I was like, what the hell? Big broad daylight. Does piss upon the beach after the horse done doodle up the beach. And to make it even worse, I was already complaining about the beach before all this happened right in front of me. Come here, I said to the wife, he said, yo, this could have been one nice beach, you know. Anyhow, them clean this up and put up the proper things out here. Wow. Tourists would actually probably divert like Dog Gomobi or Ochi. Them come over this side instead. The used condoms. I don't know if it's a prostitution corner, but it's a whole heap of used condoms was there on the beach, on that beach. A whole heap of baby diapers. The baby diaper them full of doodoo and bust out because rain fall and wet them up. And just, it, it was just disheartening to see, you know. And we have to do better. We have to do way better. As people, we can do better. So, yeah. The zinc fence something, I'm loving it. Get rid of them, put up the wall them, and make the place look nice, yes. And clean up those beaches. But it starts with us as well. We have to clean up with environment. See? Reason is to hide and listen. Peep through whole what's out there or who is outside before you go. That's for the zinc fence. That's for the zinc fence. Like when we did Jamaica, we go outside, go use toilet. Uh, my grandparents, them, them have upon them property. We have inside bathroom, you know, like foreign, flush toilet and, you know, the same amenities you have in modern housing. But we also still have pit toilet. Me like going at the pit toilet. Because when, <laughs> when we come from foreign, I'll be in at the pit toilet. Me lock up in the pit toilet and listen to everybody's business from down the road. And me can peep through the board, them. I see who I pass. I literally peep through the board and recognize people that I haven't seen in years. Right? I mean, me can't heal them up because I'm in my toilet, but I know so them still them out. So I, it's a thing for me. I could only imagine people living in a zinc fence community, how that goes. People are watching you. You don't even know you're being watched. That kind of stuff. Freedom Earners TV, big up yourself. Freedom Earners TV says, So Flo, I'm grateful to be here and thankful for your channel. Not only do you keep us well informed you always also encourage us to make great strides each day 
as we aim to build a better life. I appreciate you greatly, family. Thank you for that. Positive vibrations, don't it? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, so me hiding at the toilet. Me hiding at the pit toilet when me there yard and do that. Listen, people, business, and them, <laughs> them kind of who are cuss over them yard and them thing there. The beaches need cleaning for sure. So we can't get mad when time them privatize the beaches because I've said this before and I'll say it again. I'm not bougie or anything. I'm just a clean person. I'm even a clean person in my personal life. Seeing so I'm not going to fly into Jamaica and choose a dirty beach where use condom. Matter of fact, if me see one use condom, me gone. I'm not waiting to see two, three, four, ten. And the beach where I'm telling you all about, it was two, three, four, ten, fifteen, twenty. Me, me can't use condoms until me tired. So that's why I was saying this looked like it was a sex spot. Or something like people pull up out here late night, ride this or dash a condom, and then keep going or something. Because there was so many used condoms there. I'm not sticking around for that. So if I'm flying into Jamaica, I want to chill and have a nice time. It won't be one of those public beaches. You will find me where I can afford to go. So I'm definitely going to somewhere clean where them rake the beach on a regular basis. Clean up all the stuff um, and let me enjoy my ambience. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Too much seaweed. We can't deal with the seaweed. We can't deal with the used condom them. We can't, we can't, I could deal with the seaweed. I can't deal with the used condom. I can't deal with the used diaper them. I, the, the, the dude who diaper them does sick my stomach. I can't deal with them. Once I see those, I'm out. You're lucky if they ain't dropping pants and doodle too. <laughs> the man will piss on the beach, right? I mean, yo, and you know the thing is, he did it in front of everybody. There's a beach. Okay, so you have Helsha, and then there's a next beach. We keep on forgetting the name of the next beach when they're right down the road from it. We go over and they go get some nice cold jelly because there's a man that stand up outside and him have like a, freeze, a, a fridge on his truck and, you know, him bust the jelly for you and him put it in a bag. And it's pretty nice with a long straw and them something there. But anyhow... And they charge to go into, I think it's Fort Clarence or something at name. I forgot the name of it. But it's in between those two beaches. So there was actually a family who was chilling. <coughs> there was actually a family who was chilling with children and everything right out there. So in the water where the man jump off of the horse, pull out him hood and just piss. And I'm like, oh. now this is one of many things. Public littering, indecent exposure. This is borderline predatory, nasty behavior because you're exposing yourself to children. Never care, brother, just never care. Jump right back on the ass and rode on out of there. I was like, yo, we, we unruly bad. We unruly bad. So, yeah, lucky him never pulled on him pants and do the stuff. Freedom Earners TV say I grew up in and around the zinc fences and nowhere knocking it down. Zinc and building concrete, just speed. Yeah, man, on to better things, you know. Great initiative, but where Andrago put them, put the people them, it, the people them good in their community. They're good in their community. We're not knocking down their houses. We're knocking down the fences that divide the houses. Because that's what the zinc fences are. They divide the houses. You know, everybody want to have them own liquor privacy. So then build up these zinc fence and then sooner or later it just turn in a lanes and lanes and avenues of fence, zinc fence. So the houses are there. Them just need to take the zinc fence and put walls and things will be better. Yes, Mr. Article Dan, in on the pit toilet and there's something there. <laughs> Squat up on the pit toilet. I like doing those things when I go to Jamaica too, you know, it humbles you, it brings you back to your beginnings, your roots, and let you remember, say, you know, it wasn't always flush toilet and these kind of things. And even one time we didn't get flush toilet one time, we'd have to take water from outside and throw it in at the back and you have to lift off the toilet back, throw the water in it and use that to flush it when people come from foreign, come visit. So it wasn't always like it is now. You pull something and it has to shh, and you turn on faucet and warm water and cold water. No, we'd have to be in 
in a basin and bucket out a door. And we'd have to bathe in a cold water and these kind of things. So it, it keeps you grounded. I mean, love keeping myself grounded. I don't want to get too ahead of myself and start forgetting who I am and where I'm from. Right? You can't keep the pit. <laughs> Banshee say you can't keep the pit toilet. I want to tell you a joke. One time I dropped down in a one. Yeah, like fell down in it. So my grandparents, them had a pit toilet and the pit toilet needed moving. And them did not move the house. And then move it a little bit off of the hole. Me never know. And I run back there and drop right down in the hole of the pit toilet. They had to come save me out of it. Full of doodle too. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning, SoFlo. How are you? I'm good, family. How are you doing this morning? I'm all right. Talk to me. So SoFlo, um, we hear you talk about like the use condoms, multiple condoms and so on. Yeah, on the beach. And so on. You don't have any... You highlight the problem. You don't have any solution? Yes, I do. Because, and, because um, and, I'm in America, and I realize that you have certain city, mm -hmm. it, you'll be driving, and you see them just throw the Burger King bag or the McDonald's bag out the car in the road. Mm -hmm. While you have some city where are, are some community, most of the, I see it in the white people community where them themselves even walk around and pick up papers and so on. Right, right. I, I see I see. Um, a person will go to the mall and they'll walk a distance just to throw away um, a bubblegum paper in the garbage bin. Mm -hmm. While you have some people, they'll just throw anything anywhere they are. Yes, yes. So some people protect their community in many different ways. Mm-hmm. And you have some people, you live, you'll drive and you just see them at short. Anything, them spit out a door. They'll do anything. Right. So I think it's our culture sometimes. Absolutely right. And a good question you ask is if I don't have any solution. And I did. And I said it on the video when I came back from Jamaica and I showed the video of the guy peeing on the beach. But I'll go over the solution again because it's pretty simple. All right. Then I'll go back in the chat. All right, my brother. Yeah. Manners. All right. So the solution, a good question that. Absolutely good question. Because, you know, a lot of people say that too. We don't always talk about the problem them, and nobody never even talk about the solution. We don't do them video after views. No, we actually really, really want solution because we are not foreigner. We dare Jamaica on a regular basis. And these places we speak of, me, myself, I am there. So it benefits me to see solutions put into place, right? Right. Now, it starts with us, first of all. Stop doing it, <laughs> you know? First of all, and another thing that he said, which is done right here in Florida where I live at, they have beach cleanup crews. They have lifeguards and they have beach cleanup crews. They have vehicles, you know, they buggy them, what they drive on the sand. They do that up and down the beaches here. They have a machine that rakes the beach. Um, also the people here, I've been on the beach my, almost my whole life now in Florida and especially the part where I've been now for quite some time. I noticed that if a plastic bag and a bottle end up on the beach, I can count on one of the persons passing by to pick it up because the government keeps it clean. So if government's not around at this moment to keep it clean, the people are so used to seeing their beach clean that it feels uncomfortable to see even one bottle and a bag or something out of place. Somebody is coming to pick it up and they pick it up. So again, it starts with us first, wanting our environment to be clean. But what I did notice in Jamaica is this. Go down the beach, there's nowhere to use the bathroom. Nowhere to use the bathroom. The one bathroom you see over Helsh and the bathroom looks scary. Like, I think the bathroom looks like a pit toilet the, over Helsha Beach. I think it's the same way just to, even to right now. There is no door on it. It's a curtain that's flapping in the wind, a thin curtain. So which woman are going to go in there so if we use the bathroom now and skid out ourselves, pull down our clothes, and, you know, men are standing outside who are strange men, right? Right. I, 
it's not well the modernized pit toilet now you know they use the same toilet bowl that you have in your house now flush toilet and they will put that into a board building and they will build over it um so that would be your pit toilet but it's still a pit toilet it's not a flush toilet like that because there's no tank to flush it or something and them have a bucket of water sit down there where you can throw in there and flush if you do do all kind of something like that like we need to fix up we need to fix up and here we have facilities we have facilities where the people them can shower we on the beach we have facilities where the people them can clean up themselves we have you know and then again another thing that i think they are running from is cameras keep the cameras rolling these are our beaches i want to know who i go out there got dagger i left so many condoms on the beach because it's a repeat offender or it's a group of repeat offenders pile up the baby diaper them pile up they probably even bring garbage from their house and dump it at that beach because there's no way that much could be there without people dumping now who want dump them garbage on a beautiful beach i don't know it sounds crazy but those are the solutions you know government become more involved employ some people and make it their specific job to keep the beach clean give them the tools that are needed to keep the beach clean. Put a couple of sheds on the beach and they can work from those sheds. I would love to do that. That sounds like a job. You're in your shed all day, you monitor your section of the beach, you jump in your thing, you buggy and you drive up and down the beach every couple of hours and you see stuff on the beach, people dash with this, that and the other, you pick them up. That's your job, you keep the beach clean all day. We have to start investing in our local infrastructure it's not hard to do. It's not hard to do at all. And a rocket science. Jeff says, if Jamaicans were committed to taking care of the country like them LOB and JL, them love the JLP and the PMP, trust me, we would be ahead of Bahamas and the others. We already the capital of the Caribbean, but we don't act it. It's true. Absolutely true. It's the pride in the people. The pride in the people. Somebody said majority of the beaches in Florida are spotless. Uh, the other day, when I didn't go live, I went to the beach because the beach here is like my favorite place to be. You know, your throat are hurting, you feel like you get sick or everything like that. The first thing you said to yourself is, let me go get some sun and some sea air. And I did that. And I'm proud of the beach. The beach is here where I live. And I want to be as proud of the beaches in Jamaica as well. So when we talk, <coughs> when we talk, people don't say, oh, you always are going like say foreign better than Jamaica. It's not that I'm acting like foreign is better than Jamaica. It's just that them have some things in place here that actually really works. So we get to enjoy these things, right? Look. Can I share them with you? That was just a uh, couple of days ago. Out there upon the beach. Just go for a walk upon the beach with the wifey, right? The beaches are, somebody just said it, that the beaches, most of the beaches in Florida are spotless. They are. Clean. To the bone, like nothing on the the beach. <coughs> nothing on the beach. And I could take these pictures at any part of the beach and they will look the same not even a chips bag nothing so yeah jamaica this and this is down the street from my house so do i love living here hell yeah i enjoy living here and not only that the beach gets crowded in certain sections only so i could go to the beach and i could have a big piece of beach for myself clean, pristine, yeah man, so when we, when, when, when you see people save up their money and book them ticket and say, I'm going to Jamaica, this is, this is what they have in mind, this is what they have in mind, so to my Jamaican people, don't embarrass us and have these people come from foreign and reach Jamaica, and they're like, mm, 
my beach in Florida way better than this. Ew. The beaches in Jamaica are nasty. That's embarrassing. I hate hearing that. You know? I hate to hear it. And because they are right. They are right. And even you yourself, you start to be like, uh, I really want to go to Jamaica though. Yeah, we'll go for the food and we'll go to see family and we'll go for other things, party or whatever. But it, the beach, yeah, I'll skip that. I look for a river. Go down a river. Even river. Them start mess up the river then. Them start cook a river. Them leave everything just laying out. So, like, <coughs> yeah, we just got to start cleaning up our place, man. And, and keep things, you know, to a, to a certain degree, to a certain level. As y'all can tell, my coughing is not gone away. It's still here. And I've been trying very hard to subdue it. I think I might have to go to the doctor, even though I'm using uh, natural remedies. The natural remedies ain't kicking in kind of thing. So I might have to go get some. Don't really want to do it. But my daughter had the same kind of cough. And they put her upon some antibiotics, something, and she ended up getting rid of hers. Me, I tried beat mines naturally, but it seemed like it's not going. Lovely Anika says, so far, I just came back from Jamaica, and the beaches in Portland are very clean and modernized. The bathroom was clean as well, and I loved it. Yeah, and they can replicate that. Lovely Anika, big up yourself, and thank you for sharing. And every time she's here, I always say go over to Lovely Anika channel, check out her content because she has her own thing going on over there as well. And I'll see you over there, right? Um, <coughs> but yeah, they can replicate that and, and do it more across the island. Make it standard then. It's standard in the state of Florida where I'm at that the beaches have certain things. It should be standard in Jamaica too. Because that's what people look at us for. Them look at come on, people look at us in Jamaica for our beaches, our reggae music, our vibes, right? Right. So when they come and they see dirty beaches, and the only beaches that are clean are the ones that are privatized, it doesn't send a good message. It doesn't send a good message at all. Yeah, but big up to the beach them were clean in Jamaica. That's terrible. There was a public beach near where we stayed in Jamaica last year. The music was pumping, so we thought we could go there. But it was not clean, so we stayed on the clean side. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I'm not making this up. I, I wouldn't do it to make us look bad. You know, the, the, the beach that I went to with wifey that was clean. And it was clean and beautiful, but it was... In a tourist era kind of beach. It was in a tourist era kind of beach. It wasn't a public beach. So it's the public beaches we're talking about, right? Yeah. And yeah, we need we need to do better, man. Alright, so moving right along. We're not gonna beat that topic that to death because we have other things to talk about. Um the main topic for this morning though, so we were gonna talk about cost of living, we we're gonna talk about Bujabantan's son passing away. But the main topic for this morning was going to be China and China's new pledge to Jamaica and how this works out on the world stage for Jamaica, especially backing the conversation about Jamaica becoming more Chinese dependent and um, even China owned kind of thing. So I went and looked up some information this morning because <coughs> come on, no certain things and i think uh, i can share that information with you as well right so those are the other topics we had to talk about this morning for the coffin get some onion squeeze the juice and add a little honey and you can drink it without the honey let me tell you something about my caribbean people now not just jamaican people being on this platform if i cough or sneeze too much i get about 100 remedies Somebody said, like right now, the most Caribbean island, but the JTB only selling inside of the hotels. One person says, that's terrible. Okay. 
by Christmas, God willing, my foot have to touch yard. Me need a summer that island breeze. Audrey Wright says, yeah, I can't stay away from Jamaica for more than a year at a time. And a year is too long. Uh, but that's like at, the, at my end of my wits. When one year passed, that's it. Done. Me, I don't give a damn what's going on. Me gone. Uh, I'll be back. I'll be, if it's even fairly like short, one week, something, uh, four or five days. I can't stay away for that long. I, I, I don't know how some of you do it. Like you've been away five years and six years. You have your papers. You can travel legally. You're there foreign. You're working and earning. Let me tell you something, right? You better make time for life. Because all the other things that in life is going to make time for you. Yeah? Sickness are going to make time for you. Bills are going to make time for you. And you make time for them, you know? Them are going to make time for you. So you better make time for yourself. You owe it to yourself. You hear me? Save up a little bit of your money and do a one quick weekend getaway or something like that. I'm telling you, man. It recharges your spirit differently. Me no business. If I'm in Jamaica for two days, I come back, charge up, ready. That's when y'all probably see me pumping out all. Yeah, you know, the audience is like, damn, so flow. You're on it, man. Four, three, four videos for a day. I pump the videos out so fast, y'all can't even keep up with the content. Because I start feel energized again. Just to go home, sitting on a pit toilet there. Talk to some regular people. You know what I mean? Some people who never change. Them just authentic to the bone still. Real to the bone still. Not be around. You know, this, this kind of place we live in is like majority of the people you will meet, whether they're online or in front of your face, them either faking it to make it or pretending at a great level of pretense and stuff. Be like stripped back people. Be like people who cook out a door upon the wood fire and chat bad, if I that you call it. And relax themselves and just appreciate life. <coughs> them thing that charge me up. Some good, authentic, organic food. Some fresh air, clean country breeze. And come back fresh and ready. Yeah, man, you, you owe it to yourself. I don't know how y'all do it. How long you how long have you not been back to Jamaica? Six years. Ooh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Five years, three years. Not me. Not too long. Right now, uh, my phone just alerted us that we were there 10 months ago, right? I said that, well, two weeks ago, 10 months ago was my last time in Jamaica. So, you know, I could creep up on the year mark. Uh, I'm itching like this right now. I'm just waiting for certain things uh, in particular. But we have a time where we are going to duck out still, and it, it it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I can't stay away too long. Jamaica, I'm place, man. That's my charger. I, I go plug in and charge up and come back fresh and ready again. And then when my battery goes low, time to go back and plug in and charge up again. Yeah, it's the source for me, you know? It's the source for me. Jamaica is like that for me, the source. Nowhere in the world, no, we're not going to get me to start talking about Jamaica. Nowhere in the world, me go. When I wake up in the morning early, drive down the road. And can get some Kalalua and saltfish and some fried dumpling early morning. I mean, I don't want Kalalua and saltfish. I can have Akia saltfish and piece of yellow yam and two finger banana early morning. I mean, I don't feel for nothing that heavy yet. I just go on with some peanut porridge early in the morning. And don't, I don't have to cook. I don't have to cook these at the house either. Cook shop a run up early and these kind of things. You know, man, it's just a, a vibes, a vibes. So you know, you don't fit up already. Because you know what go on when you put in your peanut porridge in your back from early morning. And that can go on simmer out throughout the day. Yeah? Yeah. It's just Jamaica for me, my friend. All the way. Jamaica for me. I look more. And then me and wife, you know, when we when we done Jamaica, you know, we're craving, you know. Because you get to the gym, you get fit. You, you, you know, your body, you whip your body into shape. Me tell anybody, if you ever see me on video in Jamaica, just know, say, me look early, early stage pregnancy. Because <laughs> I can't stay away from, like, the jerk drum them. Hey, see what next one, they pull up right as so, pull up right as so. 
You don't just eat. Yes, man, but pull up right there. So come. <laughs> I bet that person can do it different from the last person. What you have over there? You have, you have pork? Uh, we don't eat pork, you know? We're not supposed to eat pork, you know? They are Jamaica Axis Park, the jerk pork there. Hey, soup. Come on. I don't buy my food and I look across the road and somebody says, see the soup, man, there. I go over there, the man have like four or five different type of soup. What? No, ain't nowhere here you can get that. There's nowhere here you can get that. And sometimes when I don't pay for the food, I feel so bad. I give them some more money because I can't believe, say, me I get that big, big old cup here. Of, you know how our food cook, right? It takes time. Somebody intricately put my food together like this. Me I look upon the cow skin and the chicken foot in the peas soup. And peas take long for cook. Cow skin take long for cook. Chicken foot take long for cook. I'm wondering how them get it where everything is cooked right. I'm a dumpling in there. I'm a yellow yam in there. I'm a stop talk, no man. Hey, <laughs> just the food alone will make me left here so I go back to Jamaica. You hear me? Not to mention the vibes. Every which part me got music I play. The people them just lively with themselves. Yeah. I be here whole heap of talking and you know how we do already, right? I'm stand up out the road sometime and just watch people. And just watch people. And watch how alive and how vibrant we are. You know? Now I run down nothing. Now I stress out myself too much over nothing. And then I think about us. <clears throat> are we there far and I stress out myself? Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, SoFlo. Good, good morning, family. How you doing? I'm good, bro. I'm in the New York City Parliament. Ah. Big up to the New York family. What go on? Go on, tell us, yo. You're one of the greatest vlogger, brother. Who are Vex Vex? Manners are respect, family. Great work, you know, youth. Manners. And I want them to respect, boy. Yo. Mm -hmm. It's true to your thing, brother. Yeah, you have to be, you know? So you come out, you got Jamaica, you come back, come talk, what go on? Mm -hmm. No vlogger, no, nah, that. <laughs> be a mix up and he says, she say and them things there. Yeah. Yeah. So you say all of you like you, you like you get all of medal. Yeah. Make sure any time you get medal for bloggers in there, you forget the first medal, you know. <laughs> manners, I respect family. Oh, yo, you know what I'm saying? I watch your brother. Manners, manners. Roll up my ears, I watch your thing, brother. Manners. And trust me, I never ever see you do something because I say, you say, flow for, nah, move right. You ever put in the work, brother. Yeah, we have to uphold the standards, man, because we have to go back home and go show with face, you know. We walk road for real, you know. So we don't want nobody fling nothing off. Because you know how our people stay still, you know. Yeah, you, you, you move certain way, and man, we run you out a certain place. So uh, the face are what we work with still. So anywhere the face is seen, we want respect for follow that same way. Because we give it. And, yeah, man, it's a clarion still. Yeah. It's a great parish, man. See it there? Enough great you will come from Clarion, man. Ah. I that tell you that whole great soccer player, whole for great running. That is it. Runner. Musician. Yo, brother. But I know how to bless you like you start right now. Because you're too great in the vlogging world. Right yeah, do it, man. I, mean, I appreciate it greatly. Right, that's how you yeah, lift, you lift Boy, the you spirit. Boy, just continue your journey, man. I mean, nothing to do with you. I appreciate you greatly, my brother. Because you do for Jamaica, you know. Great thing you do for Jamaica, my brother. Thank you. I appreciate you greatly. Yeah, man. Just continue to be a good man. Man has all respect. And... It's an upcoming artist, I call him. I'm going to link you for years still, yeah? All right, sir. One love, big up yourself. I'm going to send it to all the chat, let me get listen to them, yeah? All right. Right, that's all? No, I'm not going to send them this. I'm going to send them out for years, man. I'm going to read you. Okay, man. okay. All right, manners. Manners. One love, I'll go back in the chat. Big up yourself, yeah? All right, manners. Yeah, brother. <clears throat> yeah, man. <laughs> See, <laughs> beloved, beloved that because, listen. Uh, <laughs> I, I I pride myself so much on just walking when I'm there, yeah. You know, me not, I mean, I have to cut down no bush. I don't mean, have to cut bush and run from nobody. I run from nobody. We love Jamaica. We want to walk any which part we go. I want to be able to jump out of my vehicle and walk around. You see, even if I say stuff where people don't like, you see, when them see me, they, it, it's never it's never so hurtful and so disrespectful that a man feel like. If so, if anybody ever tried to do me nothing, I because them just want to do me something for, for reasons beyond my control. Cause check it, even when me at school, and I tell my brother them and my sister them say, yo, we have to uphold principles, and we're a certain kind of people. We come from proud people. 
we stand on shoulders of giants and we have to continue to build in that direction. Certain things we're not, we're not supposed to you know, mix up in all these things. I understand it's modern times and things moving, but can't lose myself on them things. Even when I speak in that manner, right, and I cut down certain things, when certain men see me out the road, you know, they still say, Yo, you know, some level two like or you um talk about that certain something there, something there, you know, still. And me and them can still have a conversation. And by the time we leave, dear sir, they fully understand what I'm saying. Or women, you know, so you have a point, though. Yeah, man, you have a point. Man, as I respect, same way. See? So I just love, man. Love and man. I love, I love do it, you know. Have a genuine love for your culture. And for That's why I encourage everybody to continue to go home. Some of y'all be out here too long and haven't been home in so long. You start lose touch, you know. Me I tell us that for me love for Jamaica, man. If Jamaica was a girl, man, I just hug her up so all the time. <laughs> so we just in love with, with culture, with people. Me love how we talk. Me love the different places in Jamaica with the different talking. Cause you know, say town sound different from country, and then different parts of country sound different from different other parts. Same thing for town, same thing for all over. We just have our uniqueness about us. You know, we're such a creative people, such a vibrant people. We're fighters. We're uh, lovers. We are... Me here, somebody said Jamaicans are the most um, nicest, well-mannered, disrespectfulest kind. <laughs> it's just, we're just everything in that just one, so, right? In love with us, man. Us. And us, yeah. Big up to the whole Caribbean, though, because I want everybody from the Caribbean to understand that, too, that although I'm a proud Jamaican, I recognize our place in the world as well, right? So we are a part of the Caribbean family as well, and we big up all the other Caribbean islands as our brothers and sisters as well. Yeah, but true, me a Jamaican to the bone still. Me just depend on the Jamaica thing all the time, you know? Uh, my goal is to visit those other Caribbean islands, though, uh, and I hope that things work out in our favor that we're able to start doing so shortly. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning. It's lovely. Good morning, family. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good because I have a gentleman. Hold on there. Why are your phone breaking up? I, I, I want you to Probably be heard. because I have it on speaker. My bad. Okay. <laughs> no, I was like saying, I just came from um, Portland and I was just visiting that side of down for the first time again. I was like, you know, pull up my camera, I'm gonna vlog, I'm gonna, you know, get some clips. Man, they they were literally trying to curse me out. Like going to the market, it was like, oh, we don't want to be on no TV, nobody mm. not no camera on my face. Wait there, wait there, wait there, I need you to say that loud, cause you're so low. But this is oh, and so see, see me have a okay. problem with this. Me have a problem. Oh, this you you just hit a nerve and I have a problem with this. I'm, before you before you even say it, right? Let me tell you why I have a problem with this. I have a pro Listen to what she's about to say. I have a problem with this because I'm not hating on anybody, but I've been watching lately and I've seen videos pop up next to my video. I'm sure they pop up next to yours too, right? Uh, yeah. None our type of people are able to go to Jamaica and go into all kinds of places. And they take them in there. Like, mm -hmm. they welcome them with open arms. You know what I mean? I said, them tell out all them secret, them show everything where everything is. They give their video a nice vibe, a nice ambiance, and then they're on their way with their content. Hundreds of mm -hmm. thousands of views, millions of views. And then us, who are truly authentic Jamaicans, yeah. t t t say what you just said, please. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm buffering. But I went to the market in Portland that's where hubby from from mm -hmm. i was born to Antigua Bay. See. and i was walking in the market with my phone i had my vlogging camera out but unfortunately i wasn't able to get my vlogging camera because when i was walking to the market the guy was like he started to go off i don't want nobody to put me on camera and it, and it was using profanity obviously mm -hmm. but i'm so afraid of shop but my you know he was like nah take out your phone and take out your camera and do whatever you want but i felt so comfortable to see how they react mm -hmm. when we eat black <laughs> yep. Jamaicans, or they even know I'm Jamaican, but you know, but I'm just saying when we pull out our camera to record, it's a problem. But yeah. you have white people in the market with their phones out, and mm -hmm. it's no problem. No problem. So I just I just wish one day I just want you to do a video about that one day because it is really disturbing for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, please yep. do a video for that. I just uh, wanted uh, to call and say that this morning. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. So, listen, that's a big pet peeve of mine. And we've spoken about it before. And me and my wife say it to each other all the time. When we see these videos that pop up next to ours, if it says something about Jamaica, I say, who this now? I could see what this about. And we go, look, right? Why? And the videos be titled like, I am in the most dangerous part of Jamaica. So on and so forth. Right? Hundreds of thousands of views. Millions of views. Uh the most rundown part of Jamaica, the this part of Jamaica, the that part of Jamaica, they take those people in. Them get them, them show them a nice time. We say a youth from Canada, don't know his name, don't remember a white boy. Him get for, with Kino, him get for going to a certain community and sleep there for the night and, you know, them treat him like a king and all these things. Our people go and pull out their camera and you hear... Yo, no turn no camera over your so brother. Yo, me no want to pan no camera, dog. Next thing you hear somebody, I say, yo, the man, they are informer, you know, them run here and shoot video for. I hold them all give video to police. And I'm like, this, this bothers me. It bothers me. You know? It bothers me truly. But, but, what you think this is? That's the same mentality that's been with us forever yeah that colonial mindset them light them skin is light so they are right yes them hair is thin so they are welcomed in there me don't know how no one put it but all of that add up in that i guess if they see those people they're like oh them look like jesus christ because that's who them tell you say your lord and savior is right and him kind of look like them people there that's why i said the imaging of the Almighty, it plays a big part in the psychological makeup of the people. Because you see how oh, you're quick for war, anybody will look like you. And then when you see anybody will look like that image that they've been giving you since you were little, how quick you are to submit and be friendly. Man, we screw face here, you know. We don't know your dog. You know, the man don't come from around here, so I would boy the brother. And big screw face, right? And as soon as they see one of them people there, eh? hi, how you doing? You need some help? Everything all right? Yeah, man. You welcome to Jamaica, man. Big up itself, you know? Yeah. yeah. Teeth out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, boy. But you know what? I know what it is. It's just sad that that's what it is. Even in a modern day times like today. Because some places I would really love to go and... I go there, but I can't pull out a camera and film freely like I would like to, you know, that way. But it, it is what it is. We need to fix up on so many different levels. I, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna, um, I'm not even gonna keep on going with the narrative of that. It's just shame on us for that. But they are Jamaica already in my own place. They are Clarendon. Some boy come and talk about, yo, you have to pay if you do that around here, I know. And when he said that, I said, pay for the what? Around you, I'm a barn and grow. And I'm saying, all right, and I say a word. So maybe it's sometimes it's me reading into it too much. But what about the person who can't respond in that way, you know? The person who feels threatened. Because, you know, hear them, I tell them other people that them something there. So you might feel threatened and then put away your stuff. You might not be me who answer back in that the kind of way there. You know what I mean? Yo, you have to pay for do that around here, you know. Pay for do what? Around here, I'm born and grow. Oh, all right, now say a word. Not everybody is going to do that. You know, we have to do better, man. It's sad. It's sad. Yeah, yeah, Anika, it's sad for real. Sad for real. And because of that, we can't bring the real authentic. They get some foreigner's version of. Oh, the worst place in Jamaica, and this is this, but this is what really goes. And they can't, you can't really give them the vibes, give the world the vibes from like our perspective. They'll always get the vibes from a foreigner's perspective, you know, doing ourselves an injustice kind of thing. Elaine Brown, morning family, thank you for being here. All right, watch me. 
Let's run through these real quick. I realize it's 840. I'm waiting on a very important phone call this morning. And if this phone call goes through, I'm going to be smiling from ear to ear for forever. But if it don't go through, then somebody play our uh, April 1st Christmas, uh, April 1st fool's joke on me. So move along, right? Um, just quickly, I guess we need to send out condolences. The details are not quite clear as to what transpired. <coughs> Miles Myrie, a 20-year-old son, 20, very young. Miles Myrie, 20-year-old son of dancehall, reggae music icon, Mark Myrie, or Bujabantan, has reportedly passed away. I don't know if anybody in here have an updated piece of info as to what happened to him. And his brother, Jazeel, the singer, Jazeel says, yes, it's true. Another one of Bantan's son told the Observer Online on Monday. He said, it is not my thing to say. It is not my job personally to give out any personal information about Miles. My father is the one who should share any details. But Miles is an article youth. His soul was clean. So I had to say something. And he stood there in a picture with his brother. If you look at Miles, Miles look exactly like Bojo. I put, I put a comment up yesterday. I said, Miles look like Bojo when Bojo was Gargamel. Of course, he still looks like Bojo Bantan. No, he forever looked like his dad. But he looks like Bojo when Bojo was Gargamel. Car. Him have the hair cut off and the young face. Right? Right. Remember one time Bojo was a Gargamel? Bad no blows on skirt in a man. The first album there is forever a classic. But anyhow, Jaziel said that Miles was living in the United States at the time of his passing and that he he did not divulge um into cause of death or whether his brother had been ailing or what was it that caused it. He just said it's his father's duty to do that. So <coughs> there's a hierarchy within their family, which we respect. So we'll wait until Bujo decide if he want to come tell the public what happened to him son, what happened to Miles, or not, or if we hear it from any other source, right? But that is that. Jaziel said, we grew up together. I wanted to time them, and he always would motivate me to never give up. He was a very motivational person, no matter why, you know? And when he was younger, he wanted to be a judge. But as he got older, he got to love rap music, and he wanted to be a rapper, so he went into that. On Monday, Jaziel shared a photo of him and his brother on Instagram. Stories as he was mourning the loss of his sibling. The post featured Popcorn's song Only Jano along with broken heart emojis. So that's all we have to go off of. Nothing has been said as to why. I know this. I've said this before. I'll say it again. You know, it's appointed unto man once to die. We all have our date with death. It's painful when you lose a loved one. It's stingingly painful when you lose somebody so young, though, because a young life is always filled with so much potential. It's not like it's grandma, and you're like a grandma, this, you know, grandma 96, you know. That was my grandmother, right? Grandma 96, you know, almost 100. Grandma raised the whole of we, you know, and grandma raised our grandchildren, them, and she come see our great grandchildren, them. That's a whole, that's easier to accept, right? And your whole life, you know, grandma is a good woman who are so all right with the creator. So it's peace when she goes. A young youth, 20 years old, that's rough to take. Uh, life is such, though, you know. Back in a time gone by, it used to be the other way around where parents were the ones who were being buried by their children, which is how, you know, it should go. But. If you notice, things and times have changed. Like Bujo Bantan himself said, everything is upside down. Wrong is right, right is wrong, left is right, right is left, up is down, down is up. 
Pickney used to bury them parents. Now parents are bury them Pickney more than anything else. It's just these times that we living in, man. And whether it's from diseases or from accident or from suicide or from stray gunshot or from getting involved in the wrong companies or from whatever the cause may be. It's just a change of events and a turn in the tides. You know what I mean? All we can do from here, so is the send our condolences because I don't know. I see a picture with Bujo and a picture could tell a thousand words. I see a picture with Bujo and Miles and you know, them look like they were pretty close, as in, you could see the love for father to son and from son to father. Don't know the de the depths of their relationship and won't speak on it. Ain't my business. But from what I've seen, a father losing youth, painful. Pain and that's all we can think of. It's painful, especially from my perspective as a father. Lose one of my own them right now, enough to go hold me up. Cause I'll probably lose my mind as well, at least temporarily. Even though I know I would have to stay strong for everybody else, but it would be a blow. So, you know, it's, it's rough. So we send our condolences out to the Myri family, right? Bojabantan is Mark Myri. Jaziel is Myri. Jaziel Myri. All I'm youth them is Myri, and no different. This youth. Name is Myrie as well. So that tells you we even carry him daddy name. Right? So we send our condolences out to the family, man. And we send some healing vibrations. And may all be well in time. You know? Jai's in control. And that is that. Seeing? Right. Y'all know y'all who follow Bujo on a more closer level. Y'all can go over to his other social media um accounts and go send some vibrations of healing. Some words of upliftment and encouragement. We're all one. We're all one. Ain't no. It, there's no superhuman here. There, there's no. What they told us when we were growing up in Jamaica: no man is an island. No man stands alone. Yeah, even though we both up with chess and Guan, like say we are island and we can't stand alone for real, right? But we all go through the same things, my friend. So when it hurt your mommy and your daddy for lose one, I see them where it hurt. The next man them for lose for them too. That way. And with that said, we move along from that topic this morning. We just encourage everybody to live in an upful way here, man. On a day-to-day -day basis, just be thankful. Be appreciative. And live in an upful manner as best as you can. That's all we can do until your time. Secret to life is you don't know when is your time. <laughs> that part. You don't, you don't know when is your time. We see people sick out already, you know. And say, yes, this is it. But God, no. And guess what? Beat the sickness and come back. And somebody else who close to them dead, who they never thought was going to go. So you don't know when is your time. So just live good the best way you can on a day-to-day -day basis. See? Right. Um, we we're going to talk about cost of living this morning. But we don't have the time to get into that. Coming off that, we'll we'll just leave cost of living to one sentence and just say that I re I recognize that everything that we need on a day to day basis, prices are constantly increasing, but the income isn't constantly increasing to match the prices. Cost of living is getting pretty high, especially in Jamaica. When I'm there, you easily run through a couple thousand dollars and you didn't even realize that you did it. And it's not it's not flossing. It's just being there and living. So cost of living is pretty high, but we're not going to beat up the cost of living something. I wanted to spend the next 10, 15 minutes or so, 10 minutes to talk about China. And China's pledge to Jamaica. Now, I want everybody on board with this conversation right here. China is helping Jamaica to fix up her infrastructure? Yes. Um, what is in it? Where, where are we Jamaicans going to benefit from it? And what is in it for us? Because Granny said nothing enough free. 
nobody now look upon you and give you nothing for free. So I've been thinking about this heavily. And the only reason I'm discussing this now is because an article was printed last night again that says China pledges to enhance cooperation with Jamaica. Now, a couple of things. I look at Cuba, and Cuba is considered communist, right? So you will hear, burn communism. We don't know about communism. But China is a communist uh, country as well. Am I correct? So if Jamaica is in bed with China, keep Cuba at arm's length, but stays in bed with China and continues to increase its engagement with China, I'm wondering what, what are we to gain from this? I'm wondering how we are being used. That's, that's the words I should use. How are we being used? And I asked myself this morning, is Jamaica being slowly taken over by China? That's one. Is this a strategic staging with a military objective, given how close Jamaica is to the U.S.? That's two. Because we know that the big, the big figure in all of this is the U.S. Are we the pawn? And then three, again, nothing is free. So when China says, we're going to help Jamaica to get on a more global level, we're going to help Jamaica to be represented globally in a more dominant manner, we're going to help Jamaica to do this and do that, that's like me coming to your house and saying, I'm going to pay your bills for the next six months. Sit down. I'll clean up the yard for you. I'll take. I'll feed the animals for you. I'll take care of this and that and that. And you got to ask yourself, like, hmm? what's the catch? Because you didn't come all the way from way over there to so pick out little Jamaica right there. And say, I'm just going to go make that country nice and great. So what's the catch? See, we have to look into these things, you know. And I, I'm not trying to stir up no antsness. I'm not trying to fling no rock stone in a no beehive or no wasness. But uh, we have to look into these things, you know. We have to look into these things. Now, I asked myself this morning. I said, self. Go to Google and ask Google some question and see if we can find some answer. Probably on some national trading sites that keep metadata information about what country trades, what with what. Come here, try to understand what is China taking from Jamaica and what is Jamaica taking from China or giving to China in the process. So one of the questions I asked myself this morning was, what are the key things being traded between China and Jamaica? The main product that Jamaica exported to China or exports to China, aluminum ore and coffee and scrap metal. That's what came up on the list. Aluminum ore, scrap iron and coffee. I don't know if this is in U.S. dollars, aluminum ore annually, uh, 3.8 million, 3.98, like 4 million U.S. scrap metal, 1.91 million, and uh, coffee, 2.61 million. Uh, so you have 9, 6, 3, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 million dollars worth of Export. I, I doubt that that is what it is. I doubt that's what it really is. And then I ask, you know, what is Jamaica benefiting from that? Or what products are imported now? So this is what is leaving Jamaica going to China, according to these trade documents. Aluminum, coffee, 
and scrap iron. Hmm. That's leaving Jamaica going to China. What is coming from China into Jamaica now? It says that China's main export to Jamaica includes textiles, clothing, electronics, vehicles, household appliances, pharmaceuticals, medical equipment, building materials, anything plastic, agricultural equipment, excavators, heavy machinery. The list goes on and the list goes on. So I guess we've been turned into a consumer and we drive their market because it seemed like everything where we need are come from them. These are things we need to keep on looking at. I did another video not too long ago where I said the Mexicans own our, our, our airports now. China owns our wharfs and our highways. Hmm. Interesting. Somebody said, stop spreading false information. They don't own our airports or our wharfs. They rented it out. Let me ask you something. If you have a house for rent, and SoFlo come and say, how much you want for the house for rent? Okay, 1,000 US a month? All right, two bedroom, one bathroom, I like it, may I take it. When I sign that lease and you leave, you don't stay there to monitor how I live in that house, right? Right? So you don't know if me I sell cocaine out of the house. You don't know if I'm, I have a meth lab in the back of the house. You don't know if I gather crackheads and um, whatever else go on in the house. Right? Right. That's why I use the word owns. For the simple fact that these strategic things are under anybody else's management is a problem is a problem our wharfs our airports our highways and then now discovering that majority of the things I went 13 just now. And we're only exporting back to them aluminium, which is our which is our natural resources that they're drilling and digging out of our core of our earth, of our soil. Coffee and scrap iron. We don't have nothing else to offer. Hmm. That's something to think about. That's something to think about. I'm worried for Jamaica, and I'm worried for Jamaica's relationship with China. And I know a lot of people are going to say, yeah, because you're in the U.S., and because you're in the U.S., um, never do nothing for Jamaica more than what China do. And we have this mentality where whoever can do the most give us more. If they're giving, or it seems like they're giving, that's where we go. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid that this is going to have some long-term repercussions that our children, children's children, are going to reap. And it won't be benefits. So I can't say they're going to reap the benefits of. They're going to reap the realities of what comes. One thing I know about China. China have vision. China play the long game. You want highway now? We build highway now. You want infrastructure now? We build infrastructure now. You happy now? What's the long game? What's the long term consequences, repercussions will come out of this? Hmm? 
you look away. Lord Jesus, help us. It is something to worry about indeed. And yes, those people are the long game. Listen, another thing about China is this. Them not too mix. So it's always a mission. And any business that's being conducted in Jamaica, the money is going back to China. It's not staying in Jamaica to, to, to stimulate Jamaica's economy. That's something to look at. If somebody opens a business in your community and all their business does was scrape and take out of your community, it's not beneficial to you or your community. And I'm also worried about the military aspects of this. Pay attention to what's going on around the world, my friend. Just pay attention. And watch how U.S. move with China and China move with U.S. It's a very complicated kind of relationship. And the more I study it, I may as well scratch my head and chin and be like, it's like eating from your enemy kind of thing. Right? You have to share kind of smile, but I really want to do you something. But I got to time it right before I do you something. Yeah. And spying is big business. And getting closer to your objective, strategically placing your enemy right in your backyard, you're easier to reach. I don't know. I encourage every Jamaican to take a deeper look at China's relationship with Jamaica and China's relationship with other parts, other nations where the population is predominantly black globally. Let me leave you with this one. I don't want to spoon feed nobody this morning and leave too much out there, but read between these lines. I want you to go and do a little research for me. Look at China's relationship with other nations around the world that are predominantly non not, are predominantly black and look at the undercurrent of the relationship between the people and the people how they are treated their views of the people their agendas that they foster into the people's system etc cetera, etc cetera. and then it should give you a broader idea of what is in store for Little Jamaica. Right there. We're going to leave this one right here. So this morning, I won't go any further. I'm waiting on a very important phone call. Hopefully, I'll get it soon. And then we'll take it from there. Um, big up on yourself. Manners and respect to each and every one of you. King Big says CPR training is tomorrow. I just completed mine and got my certification again. Big up to you. Do what we have to do to get by, right? Within the confines and guidelines of uh, pride and dignity. One love, people. Walk good. Go with God. And I'll see you later. Right here on Morning Thoughts. God spare my life. I'm out. Peace.